Hello and welcome to this Clinical Research Updates program. And IL-6 is very similar because it's going to drive many of the local features of disease. It's a fibroblast and leukocyte activator. It has a role in neutrophil activation, for example. But also it has wider systemic effects. It's actually quite a complicated cytokine system. It, it works as a, as a ligand, an IL-6 cytokine. It is accompanied by a soluble IL-6 receptor. And those two come together and bind a third molecule, the GP130 molecule, on the membrane of cells. Now, GP130 is actually expressed in many cells around the body, and if you think about it, that allows IL-6 and its soluble receptor to influence the function of many target cells, even those that don't have the pure IL-6 receptor in their surface. And we refer that to, to the, the concept of trans-signaling. So if the GP130 and soluble IL-6 receptor is on a cell, that is cis-signaling. But if the IL-6 binds to the soluble receptor and then binds to GP130, that becomes trans. And by so doing, it can influence the biology of a legion number of relevant cells, for example, fibroblasts, osteoclasts, and a whole range of leukocytes. It's probably one of the most important cytokines, for example, in driving the, the acute phase response. We know it has CNS effects. It might have roles in promoting fatigue and cognitive dysfunction. And it's one of the very exciting things in the last decade about the whole cytokine field. It's moved on to really refer to what we see in clinical manifestations of disease. And it gives us some sense of what we might expect when we go in and block cytokine activities. Before we were able to block cytokines, we were told that well, there'd be no point. There's such redundancy and overlap between the actions of the cytokines. If you blocked IL-6, TNF would take over. If you blocked IL-1, uh, um, TNF would take over and so on. That, that it was really a revolution when we found that a single cytokine blockade could produce sustained benefits. I think that part of the development of our understanding of the disease, the treatment of the disease, is going to be the, the elucidation of a relatively simple test, by simple test means something that I can draw on the office, send out, get a, get a response fairly rapidly that's gonna be fairly accurate to help me decide. I think that there are some of these that are available. As, as some of the work that you've done has been very elegant, particularly with B-cell, right? Or a, a professor talk issue with IL-6. I, I want to turn now to thinking about some of the newer therapies that have been introduced over the last five or 10 years. And particularly, I want to focus on those that target the IL-6 pathway. So maybe, Paul, can you quickly summarize the medicines that we have available that actually target the IL-6 pathway? Well, it's very easy in terms of licensed medications, yes. which uh, there is only one at the moment, which is tocilizumab, which targets the IL-6 receptor. Um, and as you know, there's a variety of other agents coming along which target either the same target, such as cerilumab, um, others which target the IL-6 molecule itself, and some like uh, clazakinumab, which at the moment aren't being developed. But I think the, the exciting one probably is cerilumab, as it, is the one where data are nearing the stage where they can be submitted for license. So we will have more than one IL-6 blocker available. But IL-6 is, is it's such a pleiotropic cytokine. It affects all the things that we're interested in, the, the skin, particularly the bone. It's a, a major activator of osteoclast. And as you know, rheumatoid is a very bony disease. Uh, they get, they get um, systemic osteoporosis, they get local osteoporosis. And in fact, we've known for years that the most characteristic early feature of rheumatoid is periarticular osteoporosis seen on x-ray, which we used to use as a diagnostic characteristic. And these are largely dominated by the IL-6 molecule. So if you have something that's capable of switching that off, the other thing that is really exciting about IL-6, which we haven't fully explored, is its impact on immunological development and its effect on uh, TH17 cells, for example. And there are now studies which, for the first time, having shown that blocking IL-6 works in a conventional way, are beginning to look to see, can it work in a more long-term way? And if we use it at the right time, could it influence the pattern of subsequent disease? So, it works, IL-6 blockade, like uh, the blockade of other cytokines such as TNF, but it has the potential to do other things as well, which so I think... A, an anti-inflammatory and also a true adaptive immune modifying exactly, function, yeah. either through T cell or... It's also a fundamental B cell regulator, so presumably T cell or B cell modification, that would be the proposition. Yeah, and there's, you know, there are some fascinating yeah. data. We've spent time looking at um, the molecule after giving other cytokines, such as B cell depletion. 
And what you find is after B cell depletion, when it doesn't work, there is IL-6 there, and it becomes very logical to use it. And in our early studies, when we used uh, tocilizumab, we showed that it worked at all stages of, of uh, TNF, past TNF use, after one, two, or three. So it works very well early, it works very well late. We know the <coughs> TNF blockers work better in combination with methotrexate by and large. Is the same true for tocilizumab? So I think the tocilizumab works better in combination with methotrexate, tocilizumab, monotherapy. I think that that is true. There are a number of studies which have been done. Some have said yes, some have said no. I think that what we can say definitely is the combination works very, very well. The monotherapy can work, and it can work in more patients than a TNF monotherapy will work in. I think that that's very, very clear. Uh, Paul referred to Adacta already. So Adacta was the use of tocilizumab uh, versus adalimumab as monotherapy. Adalimumab, we all know, works much better as combination. So the end result wasn't, was not a surprise, and that was tocilizumab was better. But when they did the sub-analysis, even using the CDI, which didn't include the, 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 the CRP, it was exactly the same.